Hey, welcome back into our live stream today. We're going to dive in, of course, to the big boy in the room, and that is Bitcoin. Has Bitcoin started to move out of its bottom, and are we on a new track? We're going to dive into that a little deeper, kind of break down all the insights and some of the sentiment that will kind of point us in the right direction. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. As you guys know, on the show, we really dive into a couple of things here, and, and it really is what makes our channel unique and different. And that is, even though we do track technical analysis across all the different tokens, and we look at fundamentals of how the project lineup is, who the team is, all those you know traditional aspects that you can measure to a certain extent in crypto, one thing that I always tell people when they're investing in crypto is this, and that is, this is the only financial market that I have ever seen that moves on memes, meaning simply price action is driven by the amount of social and engagement around these communities because the communities have really coalesced around this. Now, we've only seen this happen a couple of times in the stock market. One, of course, Wall Street Bets. We've been able to see meme movement on projects that are meme stocks. And you look at GameStop. GameStop Stop is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. And that's exactly what's happening in crypto on a day-in, day-out basis. So though there are charts and technical analysts that can give you directions on where the analysis might lay out, the point is, is that data is only good until it's no longer good, meaning sentiment or price action or some sort of, of FUD or something that drives action in the market, just like you see in most types of investment strategies, but with crypto being it's much more amplified starts to play into this. So this is something that we do on a day in uh, basis. And the concept is pretty simple. We've been building a tech uh, for over eight years. And the concept behind this is really just measuring sentiment, how people are talking about a project, how the amplification is w working. And that means how many more people are talking about it, how many more people on that are saying I might buy it or I might sell it. That's basically what our CPI, the Crypto Power Index does. And we're going to dive into where that might be pointing today. Before we get to it, we'll, of course, dive into some of the details here. And this is kind of where we get into, I think, the long-term aspect, because I, a lot of people are still asking, you know, Paul, do you think it's going to go to 100K and this year? Where are your thoughts on where Bitcoin will be in this cycle? Can it get there? Still, all the technical trailers are still, trailers are still pointing, whether you look at someone like a Benjamin Cowan, you look at something like uh, Clemente, you look at even Plan B, all of those are looking at un unique aspects of technical trades that kind of indicate certain things. And that's one thing. And I would recommend checking all those guys out because you want to be able to put together as much information as you can when you're making these kind of uh, assessments. This story right here, though, is kind of unique. Uh, Wall Street is still not convinced on Bitcoin, 100K this year. This is a JP Morgan uh, survey. And really, the, the concept is, this was the thing I was surprised at, just 5% believe Bitcoin will hit the year end at the 100,000 the 100, mark. That's pretty low when it's coming to JP Morgan, but at the same time, it's not necessarily the end-all, be-all, meaning we've seen many of these guys be completely wrong, probably more so than not. Uh, and again, most of these guys that are in the analyst side of things are measuring in these kind of traditional formats. And you're also measuring in a market that, again, does not have fundamentals, quarterly earnings, all those kind of things that play into it. It really is all about price action. So if you look at this chart right here, the bank is known for its uh, big client portfolio. Again, more cautious. Uh, while some BTC bulls may welcome the news that 14% of JP Morgan's clients expect at least a twofold increase. Uh, it's not the fireworks the crypto market is accustomed to. So that kind of indicates to me, back to that whole point of the fact that we will most likely see a completely different run up in this run if this is in fact the one that we will start to see a movement on Bitcoin. I do think, because this is something that is you know addressed quite often, is I do think we are still in the bull market. I do feel like we are still going to see. Now, will we see 100K? I'm still feeling that there are, when you look at sentiment in, in general, it has been trending down for about the last month and a half, two months. And the only thing that can pull it out, and what's interesting is when I see sentiment data, and we'll show this in the chart here in a minute, when we see sentiment data start to move like what we've seen this week, 
it does kind of give an indication that we've got either one, false image, sometimes false hope gets in there and it does address the markets. Many people kind of point to that. But also, it's, all, it's typically what we see after a downturn. It's what we saw last summer after May happened, and we see the movement up to its all-time high. So lightning has kind of struck tw twice in that kind of scenario. So you look at that, and then also you look at the fear and greed. Fear and greed is something that we, you know, we've talked about this for quite some time. But um, you know, fear and greed, this was just a couple of days ago, was setting at right at around 28, which was really in the super fear uh, category. And now within just a few days, we've popped up over to 58 now, which is essentially pretty good right now. And that is something that, again, goes back to the whole idea of sentiment on a lot of this data and also sentiment on a lot of these projects as we start to see how these roll out. You also have this uh, tweet coming in here from sentiment. Bitcoin isn't getting a ton of utility to kick off January, but it's noticeable in mild declines for Bitcoin circulation. Uniquely, da da daily tokens moved and active addresses, addresses transacting on the network, uh, look for an uptick for as a foreshadow of the turnaround. So this is kind of what they're saying is that essentially we've got movement within the space again around addresses and also active addresses along with daily tokens that are really starting to show some signs here. So could this be the scenario that we have been looking for on a January turnaround. This is still going to be, I think, one of those things that we'll have to watch very closely as we get into. Here's a traditional, um, you know, investor again. This is Paul Tudor Jones. If you followed him, he's done a couple of big uh, points. What he, he's kind of was known for last year, finally coming around to, uh, and I want to show you this particular statement right here. And if you haven't checked check this video out, because it's out there on Squawk Box's uh, a Twitter feed, but I won't play it right now, but essentially he's kind of waffling a little bit on where uh, Bitcoin could be and whether or not it can recover out of this 40K mark. But the big thing that he's still saying is that Bitcoin is an inflation uh, hedge. And he still believes that we are going to see inflation, even though there are a lot of analysts that are pointing to the direction that we could be on the move toward a recession. Now, granted, there's probably been quite a bit of an overcorrection from the Fed in the sense that you know they announced this the Fed minutes came out. There was a lot more within the Fed minutes than people originally talked about. And that is that they're, they're, they're kind of reassessing, even though they had already placed kind of an assessment for the first quarter, they're kind of backing backtracking a little bit in the Fed minutes that came out in the meeting notes. And that is something I think that is what caused this, potentially what caused some of this correction as we saw it. Some people were looking at, include myself initially, until you dive into the Fed minutes, really understand what they're trying to do here. The point is, is that Jay Powell is in a position where he may have overstepped just slightly, and we saw a fairly heavy correction, even though we only saw about an 8 to 10% correction in the markets, traditional markets, the, the correction we saw in Bitcoin was dramatic. And that is something that I think is starting to be walked back, mainly because they don't want to lose control of where the inflation component and the economy start to, because this is a magical middle of inflation and being able to protect the economy from a recession. That's where it's going to be very critical for the Fed to strategically be able to handle and manage this. The question will be, can they manage this? It's either very irresponsible and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, when you look at how they addressed this in December and then came right back around in January and made kind of adjustments to this, or it's a scenario where they're trying to kind of really kind of just do it as they go. And I, and I think that's the most concerning to me is that as we start to see kind of inflation continue on its uptick, and even though we will see that point raise in March, and I think that's going to be a very critical time for us to be watching. February could be a good month for crypto. March may see another adjustment just because of the Fed scenario and trying to recorrect what's happening in the economy. All that is going to be a scenario that I think we'll have to play into uh, as we look forward. But this article right here, clearly all the inflation, inflation trades of the pandemic era are going to be challenged right now. He didn't really go on to say I think the inflationary trades, meaning companies that made it, made and did a lot of great things during the pandemic, um, but now we're seeing what we're seeing in terms of the market pressure from inflation, that anybody that is affected by that is most likely going to have uh, a problem. Now, he's not claiming that 
there we'll see downward trends and we'll see the Nasdaq and even the Dow 30 here in a second uh, to compare that. But it, I think this was the scenario that he's talking about. And that is the thing that I always am questionable on these guys when they look at this, because when he says things like this, and then just back here in, I think it was October. Yeah. In October, he comes out basically with this kind of thing. And that was that Bitcoin is the hedge over gold uh, against inflation. And that continuously shows that they're, they're kind of pointing in one direction. Now, sure, market conditions can change. We've seen the inflationary scenario come up. But I think in October at the time, we already kind of knew at that point inflation was going to be in a position of controllable scenario where the Fed would have to step down, slow down quantitative easing, and also slow down, slow down what we're going to see in terms of the economy and an overheated stock market at that point. The point is, is does Bitcoin, and you have to believe this, and either you do or you don't, in the sense of Bitcoin and in general crypto, cryptocurrencies, have either an inflation hedge or they don't. If we are going to see something that moves us towards a recession, that's a different scenario because that's where inflation will get out of control or the adjustments will be tightening, will be so rampant and or have a, an effect on the economy in a very negative way. And there's big differences between now and what we saw in 2008. Remember the money printing now, obviously are a big factor versus even though we did the big bailout in 2008. But I don't know that a lot of people, maybe even watching our channel, were around in 2000 when we saw this. And that one was a much harder hit in 2000 when we saw the economy really move into a, a very struggling period of time. And it did have a massive impact on what we saw in the stock markets. When you look at 2008, just go back and look at history and how these kind of scenarios have played out. Now that's granted traditional stock market and traditional markets, bonds, yields, et cetera. Crypto is going to have, to a certain extent, some relationship to this. Now I do believe, and this is only again because we've seen institutional money coming in to the projects at a much higher rate. And if you look at all that, along with retail traders being scared out of the market, which we've seen a big part of that, this is the only thing that kind of concerns me when we get into that. Then you have scenarios like this with Ethereum, uh, which gas fees just continuously, this is the second time we've seen over $200 gas fees on Ethereum. And not that this really causes any problems with Bitcoin, but it causes problems with framework around cryptocurrency. So I know we pulled up a, uh, a poll here, and I just want to pull that one because this is an interesting one. Bitcoin on the path to recovery. Yes, up from here, only 38% of you said yes. Unknown, 32%, and no, there's room for a massive dip, 29% of you. So this is a really split audience right now, really kind of flatline. That's about a third, a third, a third. And that is an exact example of what I'm talking about, is that what we could see in this scenario is maybe we saw the bottom, but is there another potential dip here before all of this happens? Remember, everything is pending in on what could be coming uh, a scenario in March. I want to jump to the charts quickly. Before we get to that, uh, just as a reminder, make sure and put your questions in the chat. We'll try to get to as many as we can, try to cover all those. And also, we have we dropped a couple of videos that I think you guys are going to watch. One was a Metaverse portfolio update video that has got has won a couple new projects that I'm on, uh, and also just some new news about Metaverse and where it's going. And then the other was uh, my slight risk portfolio, not my heavy risk portfolios, but a slight risk portfolio update of projects that I'm looking at buying. And make sure and check that out because the buying projects, there's some in there that probably we have not, well, I know we have not talked about at length here on the show before. So there's some stuff in there for the first time. If you're new to the audience, maybe that's uh, a good place to start because that's going to give you some indicators on kind of some projects to look at. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and where the markets kind of stand out. I want to go back here to this last point of movement. And this was, as everybody will remember, December 4th. And this was when we saw this major drop right here. And if you look at that fall off of what we saw right there within about a two-day span right there, uh, about a 20, we got right at 18, 19%. If you go all the way down into the wicks, you're easily in the 20% adjustment. Then we started to see that high right there, which was still 10% off of its high the week before. And then there was that new low. But the real 
position was right here. And that was, a oh, like I said, a 20% drop over a period between January, or excuse me, December 3rd and December 14th. And this was a concern because when we see those kinds of moves, sentiment usually continues to follow against it. So you saw right here, sentiment was still kind of holding in the 63 to 62 range and fell off. This was the first time that we had seen sentiment drop down below or very near 60 points. And this was this next period of time, which was right here on January 5th. One month later, we saw another correction here. Now, it wasn't as great as the previous month, almost four weeks to the day of where that happened, but it did start to stabilize. But what is interesting to me is this, is we are seeing an adjustment right here of sentiment for the first time in the 70s on Bitcoin in over eight weeks. Now, that is both concerning, but also optimistic. And let me kind of explain that because sentiment went up. Also, amplification went from a 56 to a 69. That is a big move. Now, that's why we show that fear and greed index because that's a good example of going from like a 20-something to what we're seeing, almost 60 right now. Now, this could be false hope in the sense that people are looking for this. Now, when I look at the charts, and I want to kind of zoom in on this a little bit to show you just where our data is pointing. And you can kind of see right here, when we started, uh, when we placed this forecast in, we did it here with no trading in front of it. And we had this downturn and it, it held with what our indice was showing in terms of sentiment. A little bit of a dip, so it literally was right on it. We had a little bit of a rise. We didn't call this little bump right there. That's two, uh, two candles right there on the four hour. And then we showed this little dip right here, which again also showed it, even though we got that deep wick uh, right there on the market. And then we show almost to the day or to the hour, this wick right here, which was today and taking it up to 43K. And we're, of course, we're now underneath 43K again, 42.8. So uh, an example of this last night is that I went in and made a trade on this dip right here at 41.5. And this was a swing trade for me. And what I was looking at, again, was this potential little clip right here. It did prove out to be the case. Uh, I executed the order in. We also closed the order at 43, and it did hit 43, so or just early, earlier. Closed the order out and made a nice little swing trade. Now, those are the kind of trades that people, I think, will be able to make. Now, if you are a buyer and a holder, this is not for you. It's probably not a strategy you would want to use. Now, over long term, this may be a strategy that you may want to look at in terms of buying an acquisition or dollar cost averaging, which is another strategy. Now, the only thing that concerns me is I feel like we are going to see a little bit of a downturn again here based on what we're seeing in our sentiment data. But really what concerns me is this little bubble right here, and that is around mid next week. This is where the data starts getting very soft and we don't see the pickup on uh, where Bitcoin could be, meaning we don't see enough amplification in the voice of saying, "Hey, Bitcoin is going to move, uh, going to move in a positive direction." Those are kind, of, and that's typical of these. Now, I know this is kind of zoomed in. Let me kind of pull that back into more of a of a reality here when we get into, you know, and you can kind of see these are some of these are sharp moves, and we do see them from time to time that we'll hit on that. Doesn't always. I would say we're hitting around 60 to 70 percent accuracy with these big dips like that because these usually show out as anomalies. But it is something that I am a little bit concerned about. But I do show the high coming in somewhere around 45 to 46K by the end of January. So we will see, or at least right now, based on what we're seeing in sentiment, this potential move. But it does open up an opportunity. If it does go down to our bottom, which is right at 37,000, this could be an opening for another accumulation phase. Now, this is where it gets into this whole idea of manipulation. And if you look at the market, I just want to show you where we are, and we'll go to the six month here on this. So you're looking at the, the YM1, which is, of course, is going to give you kind of an overview of the market and really not, not a lot of trends moving, even though it does have some in and out, but this is something that we kind of see on, a, on an ongoing basis. Then you go into the 30 on the ES1 chart, and again, all movement up, a little bit of downward 
uh, trend right here. And then again, a little bit of a spike right here on the Dow 30. So I, th I don't know, or the S&P 500. Um, so I don't know. This is where it gets, uh, to me, a little bit sketchy in the sense of, are we seeing manipulation in the Bitcoin movement? Or are we just seeing players and traders really going after this in a market position and trying to do these swings and or these uh, position moves that are really causing some issues with Bitcoin? I think as we continue to, to watch this, and especially around sentiment, this is the only thing that's positive for me is this right here. The 70.05 has jumped dramatically out of there along with fear and greed kind of also moving. So this could be enough movement in the meme side of things, whether it's retail trade, mid trade, uh, or we even see to a certain level mini whales that are starting to utilize this as maybe thinking, okay, this might be my only chance to get in and grab Bitcoin back down here at the floor. And if you look at where and what was the last time we were in this market range, let's go all the way back here, trading at 41,000, and this was back at the end of September. And even at that time, we had just came off of uh, a heavy sentiment move. But remember, this was when we measured back in September the amplification flip that occurred and then drove Bitcoin essentially right up here to again it's all time high. So that is something to keep in mind. Could this be a scenario where we're starting to see a little bit of movement right here in this area for sentiment really starting to drive the chart? So I think we're going to get to the questions, but that's the question I have is, is this a false hope uh, indicator that we're measuring right now? Because we did pop out quickly and we saw a little bit of a pop but we've also seen a red candle start to occur right now, which is what we're trading on right now around the 43K mark. So we'll get to some of your questions and uh, go into some of these details uh, a little bit further on some of this. And I know some of you guys I know are all over uh, the metaverse, so we're going to talk about that as well. So, Stephen, let's get into this. I'd like to see a video covering a Decimated Project, Quantum, and Sin City. Um, those are all good projects, by the way. I like all three of those. Uh, we did a piece and uh, had scored both Sin City, S-Y-N, and then also Decimated came in on our top 20 uh, games to watch or, or uh, low-cap gems that you should be taking a look at. Check out that low-cap gems uh, video for gaming and Metaverse. I think that it'll break down a little bit about where those, those projects potentially could go. Do you change your risk allocations with the current mark market? Um, Yes, I do, Chase. So there's a couple of ways that I go about this. In this kind of scenario, and I've talked about this a couple of times, is that I'm looking for all my layer ones, which are the big protocols. You guys know them. Solana, Avalanche is, is huge. I look at Cosmos in long-term long holds, obviously ETH. And then, of course, you have some other projects in there. And some of you maybe are even looking at Cardano because of the price point that it's at right now, whether or not Cardano can pull out of this. Uh, but I do adjust in my layer ones. I'll start to really jettison anything that is, you know, just the coins that are, you know, very, very risky and start to move and, and kind of move out that 20% of that portfolio that's in the basement, get it out of the way, and then, of course, reallocate those funds in. So that is something to do. Is this a good time to grab Alluvium? Yes. Uh, 800 bucks is a great price for Alluvium. And we've talked about it on the show. It's one of that, you know, kind of as one of our guys in the crypto pit will call it the Holy Trinity with Alluvium, Sandbox, and Axie really in the metaverse. And those are the big boys that I think you need to really keep an eye on and watch. What are your thoughts on chip shortage? Uh, will it affect the crypto market? I don't know if we'll continue to see chips unless they are uh, GPU chips that affect mining capacity. That would probably be the only factor that I would worry about there. Now, could that be a factor? Sure, it could be. But with what's happened in Kazakhstan and the crackdown on mining there, most likely we're going to see a little bit of a reduction in hash rate, which is probably going to push more miners out of Kazakhstan and into the United States. Most likely Texas, a lot of people moving to Texas. Um, how do you like Axie right now? I like Axie a lot. We're in the process of trying to continue our quest on staking because it is something, check out our Axie staking video. That is something you probably should do if you're gonna hold any kind of big bag at all and you wanna hold it over time, is a staking Axie because there is a process to do that. Um, let's get on Immutable X. Uh, we've done a couple of Immutable X video updates. We definitely uh, need to bring that one back. Probably should do another update of that one. Uh, 
and I'd like to get one going. Okay, um, more videos about staking. Hey, Con, okay, that sounds good. I mean, we've got, our guys are really into it here. So they love the staking process. We have, you know, one of our, our researchers that is probably, I would say, somewhat of an expert at it, and he's very uh, frugal, meaning he really tries to find every angle you can find to save money. So uh, we'll definitely take a look at that and see where some of the, the deals are for you guys. What are your top three Metaverse games right now? Metaverse games, man, everything's moving off of Bitcoin so quickly. Wow. Uh, Metaverse games. You know, there's a ton I would go to. Let me see if I can go over to uh, the Metaverse list, and I'll show you the um, one of our lists. Yeah, here we go. Low cap gems. Let me run this one for you real quick. So these are the low cap gems that we looked at about a week ago. This is sentiment dated here in January. Um, you've you've probably have seen us talk uh, about Dark Frontiers, Place Wars, etc. But you know the big ones here, of course, are going to be Game Starter. I continue to, to see that one. Obviously, Bomb Crypto has been out there. Now, are these the ones that I would be buying right now? This is just showing sentiment. Most of these have already pumped to a certain extent. There's Sin City. Uh, but some of these are on the move. So Chain Games is, is one that I think is going to potentially see some movement there. But if you get into some of the really um, more, I think, cons I guess the question would be is how risky do you want to go? If you want to go super risky, then I'd get into my meta, uh, my uh, risk portfolio. We've done a video on that. Take a look at that one. And also one of our gaming update portfolios. We've got a couple of videos on that. So be on the lookout for those videos because I think that'll answer a lot of questions. Thoughts on Polkadot? I hold a big bag of that. I have been a little bit, you know, kind of on the out on Polkadot in the sense, but I feel like this is a project that just should be moving. And again, I think just with all of what they've got with the parachain auctions, the movement of what's happening in the ecosystem within Polkadot, the potential opportunity for Polkadot, Kusama, and just the whole idea of where that project should be, it should be doing a lot more. But I think it's, again, Will it if it corrects, and could we see it correct big time in a move where we could see Bitcoin start to move its positive direction, then I think you'll see some of these big boys kind of tag along the process. Kevin, I just heard uh, from Pal, rate hike is on its way. Should I wait to buy metaverse assets? So this, this gets back to what I'm talking about, is the rate hike we know is coming. Uh, March is the date, unless they decide to adjust it based on something that could be happening from an economic standpoint. Um, when that occurs, most likely there will be an adjustment again in the marketplace. So if you want to wait for that point, sure, you can sit on the sidelines. It's a good strategy. There's nothing wrong with it. At the same time, if some of these projects are at their lowest, which I would look at the videos we just dropped today on Metaverse and on uh, kind of that second level layer um, protocols for um, just general portfolio padding, Check out both those videos because there's some there's some buys in there that I think if you are looking at long term holds because remember that will be an adjustment it will correct and then we'll start to see some movement back I think in the positive direction before we get to the bear market and this is the question that everybody asks is the bear market going to have a lot of effect on the Bitcoin bear market have a lot of effect on altcoins and what we will see in in Meta and gaming Meta and gaming not so much I don't feel so, feel like it. Uh, news on ETH upgrade in March could also help the market recover. Yes, it could if we see that actually come around. I'm a little skeptical on that as to whether or not we'll see enough uh, of an update from Ethereum and Vitalik to really kind of take it up to the next level. Um, so a lot of people coming in saying it's kind of sideways uh, potentially. I don't know. I think we will see some sideways action here. and I would, would agree to a certain extent, but we're going to we're going to see some of these little bumps, you know, from 40 to 43 in just a matter of 12 hours. And I think those are the kind of things, if you are a swing trader, these are the kind of trades that if you can pull it, if you're not using something like a market cipher or a tool like that, that's where I do kind of get into understanding uh, using technical analysis. But most of what we do is really based on sentiment. So we, we want to build against that. Thanks for the super chat uh, coming in. What are your thoughts on Radix. Don't know enough about it. We've we've seen the project. We even, I think, have had it in our crypto pit for uh, analytics at some time. I don't know we've ever pulled a sentiment data on Radix, but let me check that one and we might be able to get that to you. Who is still holding ADA? I just want to invite you. To... <laughs> All right, we're not, we're not gonna we're not gonna put that one up. <laughs> I mean, we did anyway. 
Um, all right, so let's get the, you know, Cardano is just one of those, uh, one of those projects that I, I've been a big Cardano lover. I just feel like they have to start releasing things in a positive way, not just talk about it. Not this, that's the big concern I think with Cardano and that's why I don't think you see what it's, it doesn't perform like a lot of these other layer ones and that's a concern to me. It's always the last guy, the last big horse in the race and that always is a concern to me. All right, so when there's blood in the streets, perfect time to DCA, I would agree with you there, Tyler, because this is the time right now to potentially be getting in on some really good deals on where this is going. Let's see if, um, let's take a look back at Bitcoin here. It looks like it's coming in at 42.8, still hovering in at 42.8. So it just popped the 43 and is, is still coming. So we'll see, I, I, I don't know, but I am concerned about that last little bit Back to that chart, just to remind everybody, this period right here is the one that I'm worried about, which is like January 15th, so after the uh, weekend, uh, which is really right around that time where we start to look at some of those things. Uh, why hasn't the metaverse bounced that much? I don't know that we've seen the bounce just yet. And that is, if we see Bitcoin correct to a certain extent, we'll start to see some of these tokens be on the move again. But I think really what we want to be watching for are the partnership deals coming out and some of the big news in terms of metaverse adoption. Because metaverse adoption, especially we start to see retailers, brands, things like that jump in, that's when you'll start to see more and more of that. All right, so you guys are tuned in over on the podcast, maybe after this live stream right now and you're listening to this post the live stream. Guess what? The best thing to do is jump over here because we're getting close to our 300,000 subscriber mark. Hopefully I'm hoping we're going to hit it this week. And if we do, then we're going to be doing a big uh, digital asset giveaway, which is going to be right back out to you guys. You have to be in the diamond circle to take part in that. It's how we find you. It's how we connect with you. But make sure and just join. It's real simple. It's easy. Just click the link below and you'll be able to get into that. And it's free. So that's kind of the cool part. But we do a lot there in terms of additional material. And also you can, of course, be taking part in that. If you have an idea for the show or you have a token or a project you want us to take a look at, make sure and put it in the comments. We love to get your feedback on that. Make sure and catch us on Twitch over there as well because if you are a Twitch gamer and you want to catch us over there, that's another place that you can kind of get involved and help out the channel as we start to grow our network over there. If you want to reach me, you can do it out on Twitter. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.